Okay, so this, uh, now we're talking about first mover advantage and the pop culture explanation for the firm. So entrepreneurs start out uh, innovative and then they, they, they create firms in order to hire and fire at will to react to unknown and unknowable future conditions. And let's just use an example of, of Walt Disney who created the animated film or the cartoon. Here's an example of Walt Disney. So Walt Disney is the first one there. He's starting at time zero. He uh, creates Mickey Mouse and uh, ramps up production, hires other people, creates the Disney Corporation. And then the more they do it, the more animated films they make or cartoons, costs go down. And you could also add the quality goes up. The more you do something, that's specialization of labor. So the, over time, quantity and quality, the more you're doing something, the costs are going down and then quality inversely is going up. So I guess I can't add quality. So the more you're doing something, the better you get at it. Over time, your costs are going down. So Disney, at time zero has a uh, first mover advantage. He's the first one to do that. So he, uh, they, now the Disney Corporation has a uh, advantage, first mover advantage because of specialization of labor. Now let's say you get another firm of com is competing with Disney in cartoons Anna Barbera, is that, is that, is that right one? I think they did George Jetson. So then they, they start, let's just say time one. Time one. So, so this is Disney. Anna Barbera, whatever it is. So at time one, new firm joins in, but they have a cost disadvantage. And we can also write quality disadvantage. Disney's in there first, doing it more often, so they get better, uh, lower costs by the time the next firm joins in. So they not, they not only have lower costs, but they also have brand loyalty. So first mover advantage can explain uh, above normal profits over the long term due to this specialization of labor and brand loyalty. Then as time goes on, Competing, they're competing. There, there comes a point <clears throat> here, we'll call it time three, where now Disney is facing a decision. Disney, Disney Corporation is facing a decision. Walt Disney is no longer alive. Now you have the firm being managed by professional management. You no longer have entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurial vision at the head of the firm, you now have professional management of the firm. And left-wing economists call this concept managerial capitalism, where you have large corporations, corporatism, who don't create value because they're not risk-taking entrepreneurs. They're just rent-seeking bureaucrats. So now Disney at time three has a decision. Are they going to continue to innovate or are they going to rent seat? One or two decision. Right? Because their competitors are catching up. So now they need to, in order to maintain their profitability, they need either special treatment 
or continue to innovate. What the Disney Corporation does, they take this route. Disney Corporation lobbies Congress, and who doesn't like Disney, who doesn't like Mother, who doesn't like Apple Pie? So they get, they seek special treatment. Disney got an extension of the trademark and copyright law, intellectual property rights. So the trademark and intellectual property rights, um, copyright, is extended to allow the Disney Corporation to continue to have the rights over Mickey Mouse. So the entire copyright rule of law in the United States is based on extending the expiration period so that the Disney Corporation can continue to have the rights to Mickey Mouse. Any comments on that? There's another. Uh... It's, it's interesting, Professor, that one corporation is able to determine law like that. I mean, I guess with with the money that you could spend in, in D.C., I, I guess that could be the case. But that seems backwards to me. Yeah, uh -huh. it's called this. The sun, the Sonny Bono law is what it's called. You can look it up. The Sonny Bono law when he was a congressman. Uh, Sonny Bono, who was a, a pop musician, uh, extended, he was the one, his law, he was the one that wrote the law that Congress approved to get intellectual property rights to, to uh, the Disney Corporation. But it, right, so uh, that's just a, a, some historical background of rent seeking and the pop culture of the firm. You, you have a first mover advantage, but then eventually you need to continue to innovate. So you can explain above normal profits, not through monopoly behavior, but through a first mover advantage. But there's also another, people also look at a first mover disadvantage, and that's called the bleeding edge. A friend of mine, he put on a lot of reggae concerts in the early 80s in Jamaica, and he would uh, have them play on uh, through the satellite and through, uh, uh, what MTV, but because he was one of the first ones doing satellite, hooking all that up, he never made much money at it. In fact, he made very little money at all. He was able to get reggae fans around the world to be able to watch watch uh, reggae music instantaneously. But he was on the bleeding edge because he had to do all the technological work, so he didn't get the payback. Other people who came after him uh, benefited. <laughs> obviously, CNN and, and uh, like that, uh, but uh, sports television. So there's, there can also be a first mover disadvantage, and that's called the bleeding edge. So that, that concludes uh, first mover advantage or disadvantage and the pop culture explanation for the firm. So entrepreneur starts, starts out young and hungry, hires professional management, who then are less innovative and risk-taking. Any, anyone have anything to add to that? 